Val Gardena, a valley in the Italian Alps, is renowned for wood carving. This craft began there in the 17th century as a way to pass the time during the long mountain winters. At first, wood carvers made practical items, but before long their masterful hands were creating works of art. From pastoral scenes to religious themes, these magnificently carved wood sculptures seem almost lifelike. After sketching the figure on paper, the carver sculpts a three-dimensional model from a block of plasticine. Using his hands and an array of tools, he meticulously fashions all the intricate details he'll later recreate in wood. For this flute-playing angel, he positions a replica of the instrument to get the angle of her arms and opening of her hands just right. Next, using the plasticine model as a reference, he draws the figure onto a block of wood roughly the size and shape of the sculpture. Using a mallet and chisels, he begins chipping away at the block of wood. This is stone pine wood a rare species that grows in the higher mountain valleys of the Alps. Pine is a softwood, so it's ideal for carving. When it comes time for the finer work, carving the details and smoothing out the surface, he switches to a fine paring chisel. From the finished wood model, the factory casts a bronze copy to use for producing the final sculptures out of maple wood. When the maple planks arrive at the factory, their moisture level, as this hydrometer reading shows, is typically between 70 and 80 percent. If they carved the wood while it's still wet, the sculpture would eventually crack. So they load the wood into a giant dryer for about a week to bring the moisture down to an ideal 6 percent. When the wood comes out of the dryer, they trim off the bark with a circular saw, then cut off all but the best part in the middle. They trim those middle pieces into uniform blocks, just slightly larger than the size of the sculpture. Twenty blocks at a time go onto a machine called a pantograph, a sharp carving head over each block. Those twenty carving heads are linked to a blunt master head. A technician slowly moves this master head over every centimeter of the bronze model. This simultaneously manipulates the 20 carving heads to shape their respective blocks into fairly unrefined copies of the model, in half the size. The machine can't reproduce the fine details, so the original carver returns to personally carve each and every sculpture to completion. By the time he's done, what was once an ordinary block of wood is forever transformed. Now the sculpture truly comes alive in the talented hands of an artist. With her palette of oil paints, she dresses the bare wood, alternating between different brushes to create varying textures. Technique is everything here. She must apply enough paint to cover the bare wood and enhance the craftsmanship, yet not apply too much paint, otherwise this exquisitely carved sculpture could look like cheap plastic. Once the paint dries, they glue a metal disc with the company name into a hole under the base. Then they package the piece with protective wrapping and a certificate of authenticity that guarantees this is a genuine carved wood sculpture from Val Gardena, Italy. <laughs>